Welcome to Gaming Fan, your channel for everything related to the gaming industry and the financial markets. And we have to talk about Remedy Entertainment, the gaming company from Finland, uh, situated in Helsinki. They have a market cap of around 300 million, so of course a very small gaming company. They were releasing games like Control, Quantum Break, Alan Wake, yes, of course, Alan Wake and the Max Payne and the latest Alan Wake 2 on the Epic Game Store. And we have some bad news for all shareholders of Remedy Entertainment. So I'm one of the shareholders. No financial advice here, guys, therefore. So today we're dropping almost 6% and uh, we were at the lowest. We dropped like 10, 10.5%. This is really, really bad. And then we were coming uh, back like 5%. And in this video, I go with you very shortly through the reasons, through the reasons why Remedy Entertainment uh, was dropping and I don't like the reason so I'm not very happy and then afterwards I'm going to tell you uh, what I'm going to do now as someone who holds a very small position of Remedy Entertainment right guys so we have inside information so this just called inside information it's not inside information haha <laughs> profit warning and preliminary results for 23 so remedy makes 7.2 million right off based on contract amendment and reschedules publications of the 23 financial so this is something i don't like so remedy has signed a contract uh, has signed a contract amendment with tencent for codename castor one of the projects resulting in castor projects starting completely fresh Ouch. Remedy recognizes an impairment charge of 7.2 million for the fourth quarter and fiscal year 23 results comprising the total capitalized development cost. So all the capitalized development cost for codename Vanguard. This does not impact Remedy's cash position. So as a result of the right of Remedy results and fiscal for the fiscal year will be lower than expected. So this is the reason why uh, why we're dropping now. So therefore profit warning, giving negative guidance already before the the, the, the earnings come come out. So not, and then what is a non-cash impairment? So impairment charges are expenses that reflect a reduction in the value of assets. Mm -hmm. They are recorded on the income statement, but do not involve an actual cash outflow. So important information, my friends. So then based on unaudited preliminary information, Remedy Entertainment so revenue was 33.9 million in 23. It was uh, 10 million, around about 10 million more the year, the year before. And the EBITDA decreased to minus 17 million. And it was positive the year before in 1.9. And EBIT, including a non-cash impairment charge of above 7.2 million, was minus 28.7. And it was minus 0 0.6 million. So numbers are significantly less good. The cash position at the end uh, of the fiscal year was 30.4 and, <laughs> and yeah, and last year it was like, like almost double with 55.9. We made meaningful investments in 2023 and created a stronger basis for profitable long-term growth. After the restart, Kestrel is better aligned with our core strength and creative vision of Remedy Connected Universe. So Tiro Bitala, CEO of Remedy Entertainment. <sighs> What he says is like, I mean, that's marketing talk. So it's, I don't even think he, well, you always have to ask yourself those, those in those press releases, uh, did the CEO really say this or is it so just the marketing, the press office uh, writing this? So, because it doesn't really say a lot. In addition, Remedies rescheduled the publication of its financial statement, Buta, uh, then to the 20th of March. The rescheduling relates to ongoing contract negotiations regarding publishing agreements. And the previously scheduled publication was the 9th of February. And then he again, the CEO, the contract negotiations regarding a publishing agreement are another determined step towards our long-term objectives in accordance with our strategy. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Sounds, sounds like, sounds like you messed actually up because rescheduled on publication of of an earning statement is sometimes a very bad sign. So it's really negative. So this could have been a reason actually for the stop dropping more. So what am I doing now? I have a very small position and I'm like 7% or something down now. So when I bought them, I thought like, hey, so I think I bought them around about here, 2021, 20, 22. 
euros so they went massively up since the position was so small i was not selling so why would i sell when they go up so uh and now i'm a little bit more worried to be honest guys so i mean i'm not a financial advisor youtuber retail investor blah 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 but comparing the chart of remedy here uh, with a lot of other european gaming stocks they 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 like dropped to their lows before the pandemic uh, bubble and, and and remedy actually had a nice uh, upwards trend since even before the pandemic and we kind of kept uh, kept running on this on this support line to the upside so if we are pump, pumping back now from here then of course uh, then of course uh, yeah 20 20 20 years would be would be really uh, uh would be really a risk that there could be more downside because now here's some sort of a gap i mean we have to we have to really admit this guys but if we bounce back so can it really go higher i don't see it at the moment at the moment i don't really see it so so i would even be inclined and this is no financial advice my friends i would even be inclined for even my super small position to just close the position now and to honestly wait until uh, until the the, uh, the stock uh, gets even cheaper like like 10 euros because otherwise I would lose a lot and then I would just buy a 10 euros and then my average buy price would uh, <laughs> would be uh, much higher. So timing the market obviously is the big problem because I guess if I'm going to sell now then the stock goes immediately up again and everything is fine and everyone is happy uh, because yeah that's how timing the market works. A survivor chip buy is so, so you know all the stories about timing the market's trading. So normally you, I just buy when stocks fall and then I'm just waiting until they go up if they go up sometimes the stock doesn't come back so i've seen everything guys i have seen everything so therefore i'm investing already long enough but here even with the small position i have i would be inclined actually to sell and see if i get a, a cheaper price to to get in again so what do you think is this actually a, a good idea is this something you would wouldn't do at this point and what do you think actually about the profit warning and the preliminary results is this something that affects uh, in your opinion the stock even further so or is it something that you would say yeah good they they were so so transparent because it's good to be transparent but maybe being so transparent uh, i mean it's important that they be transparent but uh, the information they shared could be so Gra grave that the stock could fall even further so thank you very much for watching see you next time bye bye